Hi, I'm Nina Elder and I'm an artist and a researcher and an educator and I'm absolutely thrilled um, to be an artist in residence at the Norman Bird Sanctuary. What an artist residency is, um, is an opportunity for an artist to go and be submerged in a context for a time being and so oftentimes they're somewhere really beautiful or um, a place with cultural significance or a beautiful landscape. This happens to have all of those um, and it provides uh, time and space for an artist to think and create and make new work. So I've been a practicing artist almost my whole life. Um, it's a deep passion of mine um, and almost everything I think about I think about through a creative lens and most of my work revolves around geologic processes. So how this planet has changed historically, how it is changing, and how we might think about it changing in the future. So I've made work about nuclear explosions and glaciers and pit mines, all different kinds of ways that rocks have moved and how humans have interacted with that. So while I'm here, I'm beginning um, of a long-term project that I'm very excited about that thinks about sediment and erosion and some of the smaller geologic things that um, often kind of get forgotten. We often think about earthquakes and the big seismic stuff, but also the little tiny grains of sand are huge earth-moving components. So. That's been really exciting um, to be here, especially with some winter storm or early spring storms and see how this area transforms every day. I have never been to Middletown before or this part of Rhode Island and it's been illuminating in so many ways. There are so many intense factors at work. There's the extreme wealth, there's, um, the extraordinary amount of engineering that has made the human population in this area possible, whether it's bridges or dams, um, coastal engineering, it's incredible how this area is a site of human and geologic interaction. And I believe I knew that coming in, but it's always amazing to witness something, not just researching it on Wikipedia, but to be walking on the cliff walk or watching geese in a reservoir that is man-made and to see that happen. Um, so I think it's a pretty amazing sight of the human geologic. And one of the things that I've been most interested in is how some of those geologic um, kind of extremities have made it the scenic landscape and the iconic landscape that I think a lot of people do recognize. So um, especially at the Norman Bird Sanctuary, there's these series of rock outcroppings that are very beautiful. They're on postcards. Landscape painters have been making work about them for a very long time. But when you go and actually stand on it, it's so evident that the rocks were folded in a tectonic fault and they were actually stretched out. And so it's one of these places where you can't ignore that the earth is changing and alive and malleable. And um, I think it's really incredible to have so much history of different scales happening at the same place. Mm -hmm. And those stretched out rocks are evidence of that. It's so exciting to be at the Norman Bird Sanctuary because they are on the verge of launching a more robust artist residency program and I've been able to help um, give feedback and give ideas and help think about the future of the program and I think there are so many inspiring things in the area whether it's the evidence of so many birds and so much incredible geology um, but what I think artists so often can do is to find maybe a hidden story or a camouflaged aspect of a place and start to build a really beautiful and interesting um, metaphoric framework around that. And so, like with me, I'm making a lot of work that is about social change and social upheaval, 
but I'm using these metaphors of how wind and erosion um, are changing the world, or the physical geologic world. And but for me, that's a metaphor for social change as well. And I think artists do such an, an extraordinary job of weaving those stories. Um, the place where the residency is hosted is um, in a farmhouse that was owned by a woman named Mabel, and she. She was an extraordinary human being from what I can tell. She sort of turned away from the Gilded Age wealth and um, left Newport and came across the water to Middletown and really embraced that she was an introvert and that she loved solitude and that she wanted to protect what nature was left. And so I think in the spirit of that, you know, recognizing what's there, but also recognizing new potential for the future, as Mabel did. I think this residency program is going to help a lot of artists kind of step away from their daily lives and maybe find something new and wonderful. I think one of the greatest delights being at the Norman Bird Sanctuary is how the access to nature is just right there. I walk out of the house I'm staying in, and I have hundreds of acres and miles of trails, and it feels so wild um, in so many ways. And then just a few minutes drive away, there's great bakeries and art museums and these very cultivated beaches. And so I think that kind of combination of nature and, um, you know, more urban culture is really fascinating. Um, I've also been delighted with how extraordinarily friendly the staff is at the bird sanctuary. They're very knowledgeable and accommodating. And sometimes when you're an artist and you show up somewhere, people are like, who's this weirdo or what are they doing? And I've only been met with curiosity and kindness. I have a website, ninaelder.com, and that features all of my recent work and historic work and more information about me. I'm also very active on Instagram. Um, I am also a writer and I use Instagram to combine images and writing um, in what I think are interesting ways. And so my handle on Instagram is Nina Elder Artist. So I'm, I travel full time and I'm always happy to be sharing my observations and inspiration. My name is Elijah Valentine. I'm the uh, TerraCore Youth Education Coordinator at Norman Bird Sanctuary. Um, and so I do a lot of the nature-based education at Norman Bird Sanctuary and, and involved with a lot of different uh, programs, a lot of which are, are coming up in the next couple months. Um, so TerraCore is kind of uh, a subsection of AmeriCorps. We focus more on environmental education, environmental stewardship, and also uh, food access. So TerraCore is a service position. It's uh, 11 months. And basically over those 11 months, we, we try to uh, complete three capacity building programs. Um, and so those are programs that are trying to, to boost a nonprofit that we're stationed at. Um, and so I'm one of two TerraCore members at Norman Bird Sanctuary, um, more focused on education. And then we also have a, a land stewardship coordinator um, who's more focused on the land itself. I believe environmental education is, is very important because uh, it's probably one of the biggest problems um, that we have, or that I feel we have in America today, is uh, teaching uh, the youth about what they can do to conserve our planet and uh, how they can really be stewards for the generations that come after them. Um, and so that all starts with education, you know, if you don't educate the youth on why or how to save um, species that are on the brink of extinction, then uh, you won't have them in the future. So BioBlitz is an amazing uh, you know, event hosted by the Rhode Island Natural History Survey. It's actually the longest uh, running BioBlitz or continuously running BioBlitz um, in the world. And uh, basically what happens is on June 7th and 8th, um, a bunch of scientists and 
uh, kind of animal lovers come to the sanctuary and they document every single species um, that, that is found on the property from frogs to birds to mammals to fungus to plants so anything that can be classified is classified and really what they're trying to do is get a species diversity um, list of, of all the different uh, regions in Rhode Island so before they were last year it was over in the Charlestown area and so this year fitting for the 75th anniversary uh, we have it at Norman Bird Sanctuary yeah, so uh, it's on June 7th and 8th. It's a 24-hour event. Um, if you want to learn more about it, uh, I'd definitely go to the Rhode Island Natural History Service Survey uh, website. And uh, basically, they're going to come out with the registration in the next couple of months. And so you'll have to register online for the event. And then you show up on the 7th and 8th. It's a 24-hour survey, but you don't necessarily have to be there the full 24 hours, um, although a lot of people do. And uh, yeah, there's even the option to camp overnight um, on Norman Bird Sanctuary, which is not something most people get the opportunity to do, so that's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, so there'll be you get paired up with a, um, a scientist that's leading a group on a, a certain category of species. So if you say um, are interested in in bugs you can be paired up with a bug expert if you're more interested in marine species like fish um, you can get paired up with a scientist that focuses on that and they'll be your team leader and take out your group to document um, what we find on the property yeah. so the curiosity lab is our nature education uh, lab that we have on the property uh, it is open Monday, Wednesday, uh, Friday, and potentially Saturday, depending on volunteers. Um, and it's open from 10 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Um, it's a great space if you have um, any, any kids ranging from, you know, really young kids all the way up to middle schoolers. Uh, it's just a great space for them to uh, have a quiet reading time, uh, take a look at uh, different biofacts under a microscope. Um, there's the new hydro hideout that we have uh, that we just opened up in January that'll be up um, for the next year, and that has to do with um, water studies. So the um, George Norman, the one of the people that purchased uh, Norman Bird Sanctuary's land initially, uh, he was instrumental in um, creating the Newport Waterworks. So it's kind of centered around um, water stewardship. Um, and a some other research that we had conducted on the property the past year. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of cool different um, nature-based activities in the Curiosity Lab, um, and it is open to anybody in the general public that would like to come by. Joining us out now on East Bay Today, I have Tiffany Pei from Four Corners Arts. Welcome. Welcome back is what I should actually say. Thanks. We've had you on the show before, yeah. and it is such a treat to have you. Thanks. There are so many things we got to talk about because you guys are just moving and shaking Starting over, over in that area. Yes, right? So I know there's so many events. Let's just start with a... What is this organization? Why are you here? What is your role? I'm right? Tiffany Pei. Yeah. Um, I have a store in, in Four Corners, and yeah. I'm part of the Merchants Association. So I'm here from the Art Center. Yeah. Um, and you have a jewelry store. I'm just admiring the thanks. beautiful jewelry. I just have to say. Thank okay. You. Thanks. <laughs> but <laughs> um, the Art Center has lots of events. Um, yeah. Actually, they start tomorrow night okay. with a um, uh, It's a continuation of what they had programmed last summer. It's a compilation of artists, some poetry, some improv music, and also visual art. Okay. So it's going to be a wonderful evening. It's at um, 7 o'clock. You can okay. pay at the door. It's a suggested donation of 10 bucks. Yeah. I think it's going to be great. Awesome. Awesome. So that's event number one of many, many. It's Just called, kicking off the season, right? Yes. It's called what Reading is, the Water, by the way. Okay. So it sounds, it's going to be great. All right. All right. What else is happening? Actually, this uh, to Sunday is an Easter market. The Tiverton oh. Fork, Tiverton Mer, uh, 
excuse me, Tiverton Farmer's Market happens every Sunday. And once a month, she sort of does a focus where it's a Like big, a theme? A theme for the, for the month. And this, okay. this month, it's Sunday. It's the Easter Specialty Market. Okay. There'll be fresh fish, there'll be meats, there'll be uh, veggies like usual, but yeah. lots of artists and gifts and local yeah. prepared food. I've heard wonderful things about this farmer's market. I've got to get it out there. It is amazing. There. Yeah. This yeah. week we'll have over 50 vendors. Um, wow. She does it every Sunday and there's always something to buy. Amazing mushrooms, there'll be activities for kids this time. So where do you go exactly? It's the, it's the Tiverton Middle School. So the okay. address is 10 Quintal Road. Okay. And, but middle um, school, Tiverton, we can remember Drive, that. excuse yeah, me, yeah, Tiverton. Yeah. It's right off Bulger Marsh. Okay. And it's a great location. She does move outside for the summer. Her, okay. She'll be moving in May, I think. Yeah. Um, when it gets warmer to the town farm that is actually closer to Tiverton Four Corners. So that's something to look forward to. Yeah, that's absolutely. Summer, outdoor. Yes, 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 yes. Um, yeah, we're getting teased a little here with the weather, aren't we? Like, we are. Right? <laughs> so we're inside this week, and that's yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, her website is TivertonFarmersMarket.com. You can also follow her on Instagram, very active, and that's at Tiverton Farmers Market. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right, we, we haven't even made it through the weekend yet. And we've got- That's just yeah. this weekend. Yeah, that's just this weekend. What else? What so else? then actually next weekend on Saturday, March 30th. The dance. The barn dance. The, so what is that? So it's a, it's a New England traditional contra dance where there's a caller and a live band. Yes. Um, and it's I, not it's square dancing. We're, we're not using not. that word. It's not that. But there's a caller. There's a caller. You you know you can go by yourself. You can bring the family. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to personally go and check it out. I kind of want to check that out. I yeah. love that kind of. So you don't need to know what you're doing. You don't. Any Thank no goodness. experience is necessary. <laughs> okay. I think okay. this is going to be a you know something that could catch on for us if there's lots of yeah. you know and people I'm, interested. I'm assuming jeans. Boots, yeah, shoes, whatever. whatever you want. Just yeah, be able casual. to be able to dance. It's and it's held in the meeting house, which is a large event hall like building, okay. and so it really lends itself. It's post and beam. It's not an old building. It was built to look old, like a yeah. traditional Quaker meeting house. Yes, you get to immerse. It's going to be perfect. It's yeah. going to be great. It sounds it. It sounds it. Okay, that's super fun. Yes. All right. And I'd like to mention that the meeting house is located in a part of Four Corners that's a sculpture garden that's open every day. Okay. There's some permanent sculpture, but the art center has a, a show every summer and this year is going to be a group show they haven't decided on who but the park is open all the time and there is some permanent work that's really really fun to see and there's a big daffodil yes, thing that happens there and so they're just starting they're a little late it's kind of cold and they're actually planted for jim weir who was part of um, building the meeting house. He was an architect, and oh. so it's kind of a sentimental but fun thing for those of us in Four Corners who've been there. Is there a like while. a little trail, or is it really just kind of go to the you garden? You just go it. You can see it's really open. The meeting house is behind the Four Corners gallery. Okay. And you just you can park anywhere, walk around. It's a lovely place to walk. Bring the kids. Bring the dog. Okay. Um, Dogs welcome. Definitely. Yes, I'm dog sitting this week, so I need to know those things. So. Oh, good. Yeah, I know. So, okay, that's very cool. Yeah. So, do um, follow the Art Center Instagram at Four Corners Arts, both plural Four Corners, I mean, Corners and Arts, yeah. to learn about all the things happening when um, things are decided for the for the sculpture garden yeah. and the events that are happening there. We also have a, an Instagram. Tiverton Four Corners that is connected. It's and like we, a catch-all. We, sh we share and, yeah. you know, it's all... Everybody's working together down there. We are. In a kind of cool, special way. There's um, a lot happening. Just walking around is really lovely. It's a it's a lovely destination. The Art Center, also the Art Center is going to have uh, kids camps this summer. Oh, is that new? No, no? they have okay. those all and right. they do winter break camps and you know, it's a it's an ongoing program that's always being developed, and people are welcome to also 
maybe give workshops if, you know, yeah. and Share their talents, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. There's so much talent out there, so right? So much. That's the interesting thing, and that is a little enclave of, of all of that. Lots of artists. Yeah. Um, yeah. And art is sales tax exempt there, which is oh, a lovely okay. thing from Rhode Island. Yeah, that's really great. Yeah. Yes, yes. So what else is... is so we jump to May. Um, yeah. April will be lovely, but the, um, the events happening. There's something uh, the Sunday, May 26. It's a it's a gong bath. It's by the Sounds of Harmony. They have started coming regularly, it seems, and so people really enjoy that. You bring your cozy stuff. You make a little nest for yourself. You enjoy the relaxation yeah. and, and that's the, the key. You've got to make a nest. You do. Yeah. So you've got you to come, come with, with nesting the right... materials. I've done this before, not with these people, but you know, I know it's fabulous. It's it's like getting a massage with sound waves. Yes. Like it really is. It's it's bizarrely relaxing. It's really and great to just meditative and some people drop fall it asleep down. and start snoring and they just add to the <laughs> orchestra there, right? <laughs> it's so great. It's so great. It is great. Oh, nice, nice. So that's May. That's May. And yeah. jumping to June, the woman who throws the farmers market weekly also produces an event that's kind of a new event for Four Corners. It's on June 8th this year, and it's called the Farm Coast Ramble. And so it's an art and garden ramble. And she likes to picture that as rambling around the neighborhood yeah. um, and checking it all out. But then on the corner, there'll be lots of vendors and artists and different things happening. Um, so that'll be really lovely in June. So a little kind of permission to snoop into some gardens? or Is that Actually, the vibe or what? Yeah, I mean, you can walk all around Four Corners. It's kind of oh, connected okay. to the, the sculpture garden, too. It's It will be held in that corner lot okay. across from Gray's. There'll be a big parking situation up the street as well. So we expect a big event. All right. So um, just to get there, and there's just... Plenty to do. Plenty yes. of it's sensory. It's also a collaboration yeah. with the art center. So it's, yeah. you know, Meredith with the four, the, with the uh, excuse me, the farmer's market and yeah. then the art center collaboration. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. that'd be great. All right. Goodness. Also an event that it has been around a long time and was gone for COVID is coming back this year, Ju uh, July 4th. There'll be an art, um, excuse me, antique sh show. Oh. So it'll be hosted by a new person. So we're excited to meet them. And that is also held in the sculpture garden. Okay. So you, it'll just be full of amazing booths with all kinds of different antiques. Okay. So that will add to the fun of Four Absolutely. Corners. Absolutely. It's so nice to resurrect some of those things that got shut down that were really special, right? And yeah. brought a lot of people and it's just, it feels good. There's always a lot going on on 4th of July, but in the morning, it's kind of a beautiful day to come to Four Corners, get a coffee and then walk around and then go to your other things in the afternoon. It's just... Yeah. That was always a fun thing to do. Yeah, I thought. absolutely. Okay. So that'll be back. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. We always have the South Coast Artist Tour that happens in Four Corners and all around. Yeah. So that's a big scheduled, like, it drop is. in, right? It is. The, uh, 75 artists in four towns, Tiverton, Little Compton, Dartmouth, and Westport open up and there's a whole tour there are loads of sponsors so it's always great yeah. to see who's it must be an involved. honor to be chosen to be on the tour it's right? actually an organization that has a lot of artists and then only 75 of them open for the show for the okay. tour so they apply um actually they're they're just members and then it's sort of a hurry up and do you know sign up to be on the map and that's how many they have and it's okay. amazing it's oh my great. gosh yeah yeah glad to hear that's happening too well there is so there's so many events and if i clearly i'm not going to remember all of these um where do i go to find this information four corners arts dot org is okay. a website also tiverton four corners dot com has the the list of events for the art center and also 
the merchant events. So that's okay. a really, you know, great that's the go -to. place to start. And the, the Instagram, I think, is a, is a great spot to go. Okay. I just love this idea that it's a collaboration between all the members of this big, large community, and it's just really, really nice. Are, do you find, like, tell us a little bit about the organization, just to close, right? Like, you know, what is your role exactly? I'm actually the treasurer um, okay. at this time, but I like to, you know, help motivate everyone to, we have meetings once a month, and uh, we have a brochure, so definitely pick that up yeah. when you come to the neighborhood. That kind of lists everybody and gives you a little walking tour of all the merchants. Oh, um, that's fantastic. But I'm well, sort of the head cheerleader. I can tell that. <laughs> I, and I, I love that you're back on the show, and I hope Thanks. you'll come again. I think we're going to need to update, you know, so yeah, have you back in the time. summer to hear more about what what's happening there. Does that sound good? That'd be great. Thank you so much, so much, Tiffany. My pleasure. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Okay. <laughs> the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Community Center is located in Newport, Rhode Island. Our mission is to nourish, educate, and support Newport County residents to improve their social, economic, and physical well being. For more information, please visit our website at mlkccenter.org. We'd love you to come volunteer, or if you need help, please turn to us and we'll be there to support you. The Newport Navy Choristers is a local choral group associated with the military that raises money for local 501c3 organizations. If you would like to join us on our journey and learn more about us or become one of our sponsors for a concert to benefit your organization, please visit us at www.NewportNavyChoristers.org. Adoption Rhode Island is a private nonprofit organization dedicated to improving outcomes for children, youth, and young adults in foster care by finding families or other permanent connections. We also provide support service, counseling services for this population. If you're interested in learning more about adoption from foster care, or about our support services, please contact us at 401-865-6000 or visit our website at adoptionri.org. Hi, my name's Conley Zani and I'm the host of Portsmouth This Week. I hope you'll join us watching this show. This is a fantastic opportunity to understand what's going on in Portsmouth, Rhode Island. We get to introduce you to the faces, the personalities, the leaders that are making amazing things happen in our magical town. I feel so privileged to host this show because I get to hear the passion and the stories that these individuals bring to us and I feel so honored to get to share their stories with the greater community. See you then. Thank you.